good morning good afternoon good evening whatever it is good to you and welcome to another episode of all things ilias hope you're all well happy fulfilled and cracking today we will talk about some football news uh, well specifically news about arsenal transfers and uh, touch base on a ufc pay-per-view coming in on the weekend and also talk about two very interesting stories that i've been following on the internet for the last couple weeks and of course some light-hearted personal stories to sort of tie it all together um in a so ufc 304 is happening on uh, the 27th of july which is the sunday here uh, as per the australian eastern time the main event is the welterweight championship bout between the reigning champion uh, leon edwards versus bilal muhammad who is the number one contender um, i'm looking forward to, to this matchup uh, it will be an exciting fight i think leon has an overall edge in terms of striking and i would even go on a limb and say that his defensive wrestling is quite good as well bilal obviously um is known as a decision fighter uh, but he's coming off some exciting wins i think he finished uh, sean brady in a quite uh, violent fashion previously he's been training uh, under khabib nurmagomedov so we'll see what sort of what he has done to transition his game against a sniper of a striker um which i think was very well demonstrated when uh, leon edwards uh, won the belt by defeating the champion at the time kumara uzman by a head kick in the dying seconds of the final round the co-main event is a is a heavyweight bout i think it's an interim championship uh while john jones is recovering from his injury tom espinall will be fighting curtis blades um again a very good fight very exciting fight tom espinall is coming off an exciting win against sergey pavlovich which was a first round ko tko and curtis blades is coming off a really exciting win against a very explosive heavyweight uh called jelton almeida um curtis i think has a lot of wrestling pedigree um however i would again favor espinol in all aspects he covers the distance really fast and really well he moves very well being the size that he is uh, that he is on the feet um i could see it ending within the first round the longer the fight goes the more I'll, I'll i will favor curtis blades Paddy Pimblett is back. The Scouser is fighting Bobby Green. Um I'm not exactly sure how to feel about this fight. I think Bobby Green has the striking um to sort of uh, put a very competitive fight against anyone, but then again on a day that is not really his that can drastically change. I wouldn't equate him to Michael Johnson of lightweight, but I kind of have a feeling like he can uh, he can go the distance with really good fighters and he can drop some uh, winnable fights in my opinion um i would still want uh, bobby green to win because uh i don't know patty another exciting bout on the main card is arnold allen i was going to say allen arnold arnold allen versus uh, giga chikadze it has the element and um the potential to be a slugfest and a bloody bloody fight um i think arnold allen is coming off uh win um again i'm not sure who he last fought but giga chikadze has been fairly inactive that might play a role um going into this fight his last win was against alex leroy caceres who is again a known journeyman um a very good fighter yes but has not been in those upper echelons within the 145 uh, pound division uh, but i am looking forward to this matchup and i have high hopes of it being a slugfest let me know what you think let me know um what are your opinions um on the main card and um if you do think that the main event would be a boring fight or not now over to some exciting transfer business done by arsenal football club um 
end of the last season, I think the high demand of the fans was to acquire a, an Erling Haaland-like striker. So they did write that. Uh, they went out and they bought a left back from Bologna on a 40 to 45 million euro transfer, if I can remember the figure correctly, as far as I know. And my trusted source called Fabrizio Romano, I think the deal has almost been finalized. Just waiting for it to be announced. Um, jokes aside, I think this will uh, potentially help uh, the back line for Arsenal to improve a lot, even though uh, with their record in the previous two seasons, they've been very stable there. However, the left back has been a challenging area with Alexander Zinchenko being in the role uh, of the inverted left back. And um, I think defensively, Zinchenko may not be the best viable option, but I'm excited to have Ricardo Calafiori on board, which will again deepen the defense. And I think in terms of the attack, Arsenal will probably move for a defensive midfielder and Gabriel Jesus and Kai Havertz will be the um, central attackers. Nico Williams could also be on his way to uh, Arsenal if Barcelona can uh, keep their greasy and grubby hands away, which I think is very highly unlikely, but that's another potential trade that could be exciting to give Bukayo Saka a cover. However, an um, expensive acquisition if the playing time is not fairly divided between the two massive talents at right at right wing and i recently had had this this thought and i got very confused i haven't looked it up so don't fact check me but do you remember when carlo ancelotti was managing everton in the recent past like how did that happen what was before he joined madrid i am pretty sure for a brief time, I'm not sure even if, if, if it was for the entire season, he was at Everton. Doing what? I obviously say this with all due respect, but if I did not imagine or hallucinate that, and if that is actually true, I want to understand the reasoning and the aspirations behind it. That's all. Let's talk about an intriguing case, an ongoing case, of Amy Betro, famously known as the hijabi assassin. An unassuming U.S. tourist working an admin job at Milwaukee Brewers back home in Milwaukee, that's in the name. Um, Amy would fly from Milwaukee to Birmingham in September 2019. She would snap a selfie of her with a devil horns filter and proceed to take on her contracted hit um, or the attempt of the contracted hit, uh, which was her initial uh, reason to visit the beautiful Birmingham. She would organize to view the car that her target, Sikandar Ali, would be selling, applying when in Rome principle to perfection given the location and the ethnicity of her target. She would disguise herself in a hijab, walk towards Sikander pointing a gun at his head and attempt to fire a shot. However, fortunately for Sikander, the gun would jam and Amy would then make a run. Determined to finish her contract, like a true professional that she is, she would then do a drive-by by Sikander Ali's house, um, firing three shots and texting him asking where he is hiding. Two days later, she would hop in a plane back to the US. Her clients, Muhammad Nazir and Muhammad Aslam, seemingly of Pakistani descent, would be found guilty for conspiracy to murder. Firstly, what the f What in the cheap, dark web shit is this? And obviously, a Pakistani would do that. Or a hired killer would then be on the run, posting selfies and being in touch with her friends over social media. Amateur, you would think, but she evaded capture for five years, posting pictures and clarifying that some of the details about her case were incorrect, not denying the allegations, but providing clarification that some, some details that the media was publishing were in fact incorrect. 
That is until she would get arrested on the 3rd of July in the capital of Armenia this year. There is not enough information about Amy's motives, her aspirations, and her contract killing expertise or the history involved, like what events in her life led to this moment or moments. What we do know about her, that she can adapt really well. She loves to stay in touch with her peers and her friends, and she can be very elusive to capture. I recently came across a term called sovereign citizens, which I was um, unfamiliar with, but with the case of Helen Delaney, I've got some insight into the life that they, they live. Helen Delaney is a sovereign citizen, as per her own views, a business coach, a mother with a social media depicting a happy family life, travel, and wildlife. She was seemingly normal with until her gravitational pull towards her current views, which would eventually lead to her current predicament that we'll get into shortly, um, caused by the global pandemic, aka COVID-19. Once COVID happened, soon she'll be posting her anti-government views, specifically against the Victorian and the New South Wales government for their strict COVID-19 restrictions and mandatory vaccination passports. How dare they? Here's her telling a highway patrol officer that uh, she, in fact, is a sovereign citizen and she's not in his jurisdiction. Driver's license for me, thank you. I'm not in your jurisdiction. Sorry? I'm not in your jurisdiction. Yes, you are. I need your driver's license. Can't give me your driver's license. Can you explain how we're in the jurisdiction, sir? Sorry? Can you explain how we're in your jurisdiction? Your we're not driving. We're traveling. We are traveling, sir. The Interestingly enough, Helen would also be in attendance during an attack on the old Parliament House in Canberra in late 2021, which caused damages worth 4 million Australian dollars. As per the video, at the point of her arrest, um, for which she would later make bail, she was charged with outstanding warrants, driving an unregistered vehicle, driving an uninsured vehicle, refusing to produce a driver's license, state name or address, and refusing or failing to submit a breath test. Now on to the current scenario. Helen, via her sovereign group called the NDA, which stands for, and if I'm pronouncing it correctly, is Namdaka Dalai Australis, would issue a warrant for and demand surrender for their two kids the custody of whom she had previously lost. Her ex-husband, Scott Murren, and his two sons, her two sons, understandably live in constant fear. And his youngest son carries a tracker device on police advice whenever going to a friend's house for a play date. But if you were to seek any uh, life coach advice, I would advise you to reach out to Helen Delaney and um, acquire the wisdom. Please and thank you. All of these stories sort of um, make me think about the stranger danger about a time when I was naive and young and about a time that I myself almost potentially would have been a headline on a newspaper. I'll give you a bit of a backstory in this. Um, and I smile because I find it I'm using now that I'm older, but at the time that was uh, quite scary. When I was in grade five, um, I probably, I think, maybe nine or ten, and we lived in the inner city of Lahore. So smaller houses, um, we had one side sort of towards the north, which were more of the enclosed neighborhood, and um, behind our house, was more of the impoverished houses on the other side and uh, more of a rougher side of the area. This kid, who was deaf and mute, uh, one day while flying, while, while flying kites, um, tried to, he tried to catch a kite and he, uh, by accident, latched on to a high voltage power line that ran across his house on the street. 
um, and I wasn't there to witness it, but it was a harrowing scene in which uh, his neighbors would have to use wooden brooms and sticks to sort of poke him off uh, the voltage line and he would eventually fall and um, I would assume that he he passed away on impact. Now this kid had an older brother um, so after his passing I was a very emotional child. Um, I always had some form of like empathy and sympathy for people. Um, so after his unfortunate passing I would see his older brother I would say hi to him and be nice to him because I felt bad. Slowly over time, he gets uh, to be a bit more um, conversationalist, if that's a word. He gets to be a bit more conversati. He gets to be a bit more like chatty with me. I, I just say that. He gets, yeah, he gets to be a bit more chatty with me over time. And um, one day he says to me, hey, I've, well, I, I, well, I've got a kid's bicycle if you want to have a look at it and buy I think you like it and I'm thinking I'm like this is this kid's old older than I am obviously so I think I could have a look I could um if I like it I could have a conversation with my mom and my dad and see if um, they would allow me to um, buy that bicycle so he gives me a date and time um, I come you know I think it's probably like 4 or 5 p.m. after school, so I come home from school, I change, I head over to his house, I knock on the door, and he comes out, and he goes, why don't you come on in, um, the bicycle is inside, and I say, okay, so I step into the house, and he closes the, the front door immediately, drowning me in darkness, like I looked around, and I could just see a faint light from across maybe I think probably upstairs everything else on the ground floor was in almost pitch black even if it was not in my eyes at the time immediate panic and I realized that and with the fear in my voice I go uh, I, I need to leave and he goes no, no 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 the bicycle is just here just like come on in and I say no I gotta go I need to leave, open the gate, and I'm, I'm, I, and I start to get loud. And he goes, okay, 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 it's fine. Then he opens up the gate, the sunlight comes in, it's not as dark, I sort of like jump out, and he, and he goes, hey, are you okay? And I'm trying not to freak out, but he knows that I'm freaked out, and I know that I'm freaked out. And I say, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm okay, but then I just look around. And then he brings in, he's like, well, the bicycle is just here, so he brings in, he brings in like a tiny bicycle you would probably give to a toddler and he's like this is a bicycle do you want to have a go do you want to buy it and I just say no I think I'm not gonna buy it and I can feel my legs shaking but I sort of collect myself and I run back home and I keep that shit in I gotta lock in I can't tell anyone if my mom finds out that's an immediate beating of the worst kind of me putting myself in a situation where even if, like even at that age I was very aware that I should not have been in and a couple of weeks go by and now I've got exams at school and my school was at a walking distance from my home it was a bit of a longer walk but I was doing it since I was like seven you know so I wasn't really sort of that like green in terms of being able to be on my own so I'm walking back from school I've done an exam it's probably like a half day and I remember that Eid al-Adha is, is approaching fast that's when we sacrifice animals for Eid and I've, I've done my exam I'm sort of you know I've well as a child I was always just like lost in my own world just like daydreaming all the time so I'm sort of walking towards my house I'm probably another five minutes away from the house and he's coming from the other side and I look at him and I stop and he goes hey and I go hey but again I'm trying to keep it together and he goes to me hey um I'm running out to the house where we keep the goats <laughs> it's 
So he says, hey, I'm going to the house where we keep the goats. And I knew that because he used to work for the butcher who also used to sell goats. And he goes, um, if you want to have a look at the goats, if you're interested, just, you know, like tag along. And I go, yeah, I'll have a look at some goats. <laughs> So I'm walking with him, he's walking in front of me, you know, I'm making like small, small like talk and we go to this like bazaar, this market. It's like, uh, there, there is, and I've been there before. There's, I haven't been in the house that he's taking me in, but I've been to the market, the area. There was a grocery store there. There's a guy with some like vegetables. He had his stall there as well. So he's, he opens up this sort of old looking house that like the wooden like door and then we jump in and it's not that dark and I don't see any goats, any lambs immediately. And then um, he goes alone sort of into a room, which is again, pitch black. And I don't understand why the light's not on. And he goes, hey, they're in there. And I take a couple steps. Then it's this eye, like uh, the alarm bells are ringing. They're ringing massively again. And the alarm bells are also saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, what are you doing here, bro? <laughs> what are you doing here? Um, so I sort of pop my head and I, I don't move and he's trying to pull me and I just, but he's not being aggressive about it. He's being very like, hey, they're just in there. And then, I don't know. I didn't see any lambs or any goats and I didn't hear them. And I say, no, no. And he goes, no, 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 they're in there. And I go, no, I need to leave. And this time I'm very stern about it. And as I'm leaving, I do hear a lamb or a goat. I don't know if I'm like imagining it or if he made a sound, you know, I don't know. He went back in and he just was like, bah. But then I sort of open that gate and I'm bolting back home. And this time it's just, it's hitting me like, like actually I'm like, this was a ploy. This was a dangerous game that he was playing. And I was also involved in this. And this is how you end up in the news. This is how you have a story to tell about, you know, for the rest of your life. And I bolt home and my grandfather, uh, may he be in heaven, um, he was alive and I run to my mom and I go, Hey, this, this guy, you know, the, like, like the kid who passed away, like his brother, he's been talking to me. He's trying to pull me into his house a couple of times. Then he was like, do you have, want to have a look at some goats? And I went to have a look at some goats and they didn't have those goats. Um, and she's like, huh? Okay. Hmm. And my mom, God bless her, dude. She's like, she gets fired up. Um, she goes, well, go to your grandfather now. You tell him what happened. You go to his house. You take your grandfather with you. You go to his house immediately and you tell them what happened. So I, and then she calls my grandfather and then she, she like, she tells him what happened and he's old. He's got a cane, but you know, he's still again, I think like just on my mom's side and my dad's side, what we had like constantly on both sides was uh, a hot temper. So he's also fired up, obviously, because he, like, he loves me and he cares for me. So and then I walk him to his house and he knocks on his door. And then the eldest brother, who also worked for the butcher, he comes down. And my grandfather, um, I don't remember the exact words. and I don't even remember the name of the guy anymore. But my grandfather's like, if he ever comes near my kid or he tries to talk to the boy, I am telling you that's going to be his last day here you keep a leash on your brother or like whatever he said. And the family apologized, you know, like their sisters came out, their mom came out. Now they all sort of knew that um, their brother was trying to lure a younger, shorter, cute looking, um, skinny, <laughs> skinny boy into their house. And I laugh about this because I don't know, this is just how I deal with the story, but boy, oh boy, that could have ended very poorly for me. And on this note, I will leave you um, for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, make sure to like, share, follow, and subscribe. And um, 
never follow a stranger. If they've got something interesting to show you, it can't be that interesting. You don't want to be a headline. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.